Hello everybody, it's AD here for CG Masters and Pi Menus are now with us as of today's daily build. So we can now all grab ourselves a copy and give it a try. Now I was going to do a quick post on the CG Masters Facebook page about this, but I've been playing with them and felt like this is something that should have a bit of a video to back it up. Plus I'm loving working with these Pi Menus and want to congratulate everybody who worked on this. Really great work all around. In particular, Anthony Riakiotakis, uh, aka Sci-Fi, for taking it to the finish line. Uh, apologies if I have butchered your name in any way there. So I come from a Maya background where the pie menus are called radial menus, or at least these two things are a reasonable equivalent of one another. So I've been using this kind of functionality for quite some time. I can tell you that uh, for some users, these are going to be a really big deal and a really great speed up for that person's workflow. Basically, the pie menus allow you to keep your hands from moving too much while you're working and so speed things up. Uh, the downside is you have to learn the muscle memory a little, but uh, that doesn't actually take very long. Another cool plus for this is it eliminates the need to keep moving to the numpad. Blender is numpad heavy when it comes to hotkeys, so if you happen to have a laptop without a numpad, it can get quite a little tricky. Now you'll find you won't even need the emulate numpad option. So first, to try this out, you'll need to make sure you have a most recent cutting edge version of Blender. I recommend grabbing a download file from the daily builds, which you can find from the download area of the main blender.org website. Then once you've got Blender launched, you're going to need to enable it as an add-on. Uh, so here I am in the user preferences here. I've just switched the properties window over to the user preferences. And on the add-ons tab, you can, we can either type in Pi here and that'll filter it down, or you can come down to this category at the bottom, user interface, and that will uh, basically filter out everything else except user interface related add-ons. And here we can see we've just got this one, the Pi menu is official, and just make sure this is enabled. And then um, once it is, then we can get access to it. So don't worry if it really isn't for you, then you can just leave this disabled and you'll never even be aware that the functionality has even been added and potentially gets in the way of whatever you're really familiar with. Assuming you've just enabled the add-on, you can then go over to the input tab of the user preferences and type in Pi into the name field of the available hotkeys. And here you'll see the current triggers, so to speak. So we've got, um, this is the comma, the full stop, the control space, Q, Z, and tab. These are the main ones that we have. You can, of course, also just go over to the Blender change log for version 2.72. Uh, we can see here under the release notes, we can just select Blender 2.72 and under user interface here, uh, we'll see the Pi menu section down here. Uh, there's a lot more for you to read through if you want to go at a leisurely pace through this. And you can see those same options there that we've just discussed. So let's get right into what these are. Um, first, I'll go, uh, we'll do the first one. Uh, the first one that shows up in this list anyway, this is the comma. Um, let's just uh, press the comma and you'll see we basically get our Pi menu there, this radial selection of possibilities. And this is basically the snapping menu. So normally that was on Control, Shift and Tab and we'll get this regular list style menu here. And But if we just go to the comma key, we can see that we can choose it here. I closed that just by right clicking there, by the way. And so uh, we can just press comma and then say we wanted to, we can see our current snapping type is set to incremental. Let's say we wanted to switch it to vertex. Um, let's press comma and vertex you'll find on the right hand side. Now you can see we can just leisurely go over to here and then left click on vertex. And now we've switched over to vertex. But if we just switch that back to increment and I want to just the, the beauty of the Pi menu really is the, uh, that it's a kind of more of a gesture than it is a menu. So eventually you'll get the hang of it and you'll just be able to just swing through these at lightning speed. So if I just press comma and then gesture to the right hand side straight away, you can see that we just switched it immediately. And then if I just go to comma and switch to the left, you can go, so you can see we went back to increment uh, because increments on the left there. Next one on the list is the full stop here. So um, let's just take a look at that. Full stop brings up our pivot points. You can see the various different pivot points we can use, which are normally in this menu down here. Now, this brings me to another point, which is that all of these 
uh, hotkeys are pretty much aligned with what you might have found on that key already, apart from Q, of course, which um, is not normally assigned to anything. Um, we'll just come to that in a moment. But the full stop usually does, for example, um, set the pivot point to the 3D cursor. So if we just bring that up, we can see that we do have that option to the right here. So if we were to see the current pivot point, uh, let me just turn off snapping, by the way. And you can see the current pivot point is set to median. So if we just press the full stop and gesture to the right, we can see we've now switched it to the 3D cursor. You're not only maintaining your single click, uh, you just have a quick gesture and you, now we're back to where we were. Now I believe medium point is at the top. So if I just do that, you can see we've now switched to medium point and I believe individual origins at the bottom. So let's give that a go and there we are. So we can now just sort of quickly switch between those options. Uh, let's see. So yeah, you can see individual origins, medium point, 3D cursor. Uh, and uh, it's as simple as that. So let's move on to the next one, control space. Control space is basically just uh, sh show and hide the manipulator normally, which now is going to be a gesture towards the top. So if we just toggle that like that, control space, and just keep gesturing to the top there, you can see we're toggling through. But otherwise, we've got our translate, scale, and rotate. Uh, so translate is on the, on the left, scale is on the bottom, rotate on the right. Um, let's see, so you've got translate there scale and then rotate and it's as simple as that but usually i happen to uh, hide the manipulator because i tend to use g or what have you to um to move around and manipulate our objects um so moving on let's take a look at the q key now the q key is what i feel is probably one of the most important ones from this menu just purely because this basically sort of removes the necessity of the numpad and as you can see there, these are all normally numpad controls. So let's see, we've got the left, the right, and the top and the bottom, which is naturally uh, makes sense considering the left is on the left, right is on the right, top is on the top, and so on. And then we've got this front and back here, and we've got the camera, and then we can toggle our perspective or orthographic view on the uh, in the kind of uh, four and a half, uh, <laughs> half past four kind of area on the clock. Uh, just to show this working, we can, of course, press Q and then gesture to the top, to the bottom, to the left, to the right. And we have our camera in uh, half past seven, like so. And then we can just keep on toggling. And uh, the th only thing that is really missing from here, that, well, that might actually be quite nice, is the uh, full stop on the numpad to actually view into the selected. Uh, that might be actually pretty useful. And also there's a slash key, I believe, which is a, um, you kind of get the local view of uh, an I kind of an isolated view of any particularly selected object. Next up, let's take a look at the shading menu, which is on the Z key. Now, normally this toggles between um, the wireframe and the solid shading mode, but now we get all these options which means uh, we've also got shade smooth and shade flat on top of the normal options. So that's pretty cool. Now, this is taking a little bit of getting used to admittedly for me, but um, the wireframe uh, is on the right hand side and the solid shading mode is at the bottom. So those are kind of some of the key ones. They're the ones that I use anyway. And then also textured at the top. And you can see now we're getting a little bit of lighting so let's just see that from maybe this point of view. So you just got the Z and then toggle to the right to get the wireframe and again textured. Again, what might have been nice is to have um, a under the user preferences. Uh, sorry, if I just bring back the properties and then take a look at the, the object tab of the properties window and just come down to the display area. If we had our wireframe to, and draw all edges as one of those options, that would be pretty cool as well. Um, but in any case, this is just a work in progress at the moment. This, I'm sure there'll be lots of feedback from people now that it's in the main trunk. So let's just switch this quickly back to user preferences. And finally, we have our tab, which as we all must know that this is the toggle between object and edit mode. And then control tab would switch us to weight paint mode as well. But now when we press tab, we get this option. So you can see we've got all the options now, textures, object, whatever is normally in here, we now have at the location of the cursor there. And so we can just toggle through them quickly. What's pretty cool about this is that we can now quickly get to texture paint.
uh, which is always something which was uh, kind of missing from these and sculpt of course so you can kind of quickly get into sculpt mode and you can see we've got our brushes there on the side and then again if we tap and go down to the edit mode or object mode so object mode on the left ob uh, edit mode on the right and then just you know just do a quick gesture to get across these uh, so let's take a look at uh, a few of the options that comes along with this. We can find these in the interface tab of the properties window and we've got these four options here. The first is the animation timeout. Now this refers to the length of time it takes to draw out the menu so we can crank that right up and you'll be able to see if I press Q now you'll see the menu uh, smoothly ooze out from the cursor position for you should, you, should that be your style. And I found that the default six is probably about good for me right now. Next, we've got the recenter timeout. Basically, this has to do with the behavior of the menus at the borders of the screen. So as we get to the top of the screen, for example, once the menu is drawn, you'll see that the cursor is not in the center of the menu. So the correct gesture or option is harder to swipe to, or at least by default anyway. You'll find that if you increase this, so if I actually just click, uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, so if I just press Q, and then sort of gesture down a little bit, that would be the normal. So if I, let's say I'm at the center of the screen and I press Q and then gesture down to the bottom, do that quickly. You can see we go to the top, the bottom and then the top. Now, if I try that from, if the cursor happened to be there and I just press Q and then go down, you can see nothing's really happening because I'm not actually, the cursor is on the wrong side. I can't kind of gesture down. Now, if I actually increase this recenter timeout and try that same thing again, so I'll press Q and, and sort of go down, you can see the time it took to recenter the cursor uh, was delayed. And so therefore it allowed us to be able to make that switch at the edges of the, of the screen there without it really getting in the way of the usability. So by default, that's not really on. So you might want to crank that up. Uh, the radius it naturally is the size of the, um, the pie menu there. And so if we just switch that up a little bit further, you can see, uh, let's make that even more. So as you can see there, uh, potentially depending on the resolution that you're working at, you might want to tweak that or um, potentially you might want to keep that quite low. <laughs> Maybe not that low. Um, maybe something like that perhaps, depending on the amount of options in that menu. And finally, we have the threshold here. And this is referring to the inner circle that we have there, which is kind of a dead zone. You can see this kind of area here. And then if we actually reduce that threshold right down, you can see that you know, you've got a tiny little thing there in the center and almost immediately something is being selected. So in general, you might find that after a while, you won't really see the menu show up anyway, as uh, you'll be just swiping so fast. And to emphasize the point, this might take a little bit of getting used to, and it's, and it is early days. It's likely more options will be created, more functionality to customize and create your own. Right now though, just grab a most recent daily build and try a slice of pie. You might just like it.